Oleg is ready for the world and parts of his portfolio are rocking. But he doesn't have a job yet. Can we make the connection today and help this guy land a job? The video starts right now. What's up, developers? It's Real Tough Candy from RealToughCandy.com. Bouncing back with you guys today. Checking out this junior developer's portfolio. His name's Oleg. He's got a lot to say. We've got a lot to look at with this portfolio. And I picked this one in particular because he is doing some super sweet stuff I just haven't seen in other portfolios. And I want to share it with you guys. And I also want to share my thoughts on what he could be doing a little better. Before we start this video, as I always say in the portfolio reviews, this takes a lot of courage, takes a lot of guts. So please show some love to Mr. Oleg in the comment section. So let's get into it. This is Oleg. This is his photo. You guys know that I enjoy people's photos. It makes them come across as personable. I see them as human and they're more memorable when I'm reading over their materials. The downside to a photo is that people naturally discriminate. So what I tell people, you know, if you're thinking of doing a photo, try it. A, B it. Try a couple weeks with a photo. If you're not getting results, try it without or vice versa it and see what happens. This domain name is kind of fire. I like the assertiveness. This guy is looking for a job and he's very vocal about it. So the purpose of the website is established very quickly. Before I even log on and I'm clicking his link or I'm typing this in the URL bar, hireoleg.now.sh, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, this guy wants to get hired. It's very obvious and he's not making me think. So right away, the first, very first impression, the imperceptible even impression that I'm getting is a good one. As it says, junior front end web developer, Open to opportunities. Hello, and thank you for visiting. My name is Oleg. It's a pleasure to meet you. The purpose of this site is to serve as an extension, add a little typo there, as an extension to my resume, provide information to potential employers while also demonstrating my web development skills. I made it because I'm looking for a job at the moment. I believe it can save us some time on screening calls and even the actual interview. Please use the nav bar to navigate and explore any topics you find of interest. I hope you can find reasons for us to talk and I look forward to it. Interesting little introduction here. We'll get back to this in just a minute, but he also has Russian available for his Russian peeps, a bilingual site that is very easily uh, transformed here with a click of a button. So that's really rad. What my suggestion here would be is to just get rid of this. Uh, because one of the rules with UX UI is that you shouldn't be explaining how your site needs to work. It should be intuitive. I should know that these things are going to help me navigate. Um, and that's what nav bars are for, right? Nav bars are used to navigate. What else can we discuss here before actually clicking on all these? Right now, it's a few minutes into me reviewing this. And I'm still feeling pretty good about this guy. I want to explore more and I'm compelled. However, when I look up here, that feeling of wanting to explore just got a little dampened because there's a lot of stuff here. I want to see certain things. I mean, maybe all of these are interesting, but as of right now, this nav bar is giving equal weight to all of these. And as a user, I'm not really sure where I need to be going. So I would work on ideas for consolidating these and having your focus items up here prominently displayed, such as projects, HR FAQ. I freaking love this. We're going to talk about this in just a second, but projects, skills, uh, maybe contact. I think those three are a good start. Your history, your personal bio, that's important. Freelancing, teaching in China, this shows so much about you. And look at this, feedback you got on Upwork. You already have developer experience. People are loving you. Look at this, five star after five star. You know what? This guy has experience. He's gotten five star reviews. I'm assuming these are legit. I want to talk to this guy. The issue that I just mentioned, though, is that going up here to navigate, I might, I might not even see this stuff. Because going to history, I'm thinking personal bio. 
And at this point, I don't I don't want to see a personal bio. I want to see your projects. This is an interesting one too. We're going to come back to that. HRFAQ, he said, even though people have been visiting his site and he's been getting some leads, no one's used his freaking contact form yet. Man, this is something I get on developers' cases about when I'm doing their review, their portfolio reviews. I say, please put in a contact form. A developer listens to my advice and now no one's contacting him. I just, ugh, it's killing me. But he said maybe it's a regional thing or like a country thing, maybe a country cultural thing, because he's overseas. I think he's in Ukraine. Is that right? I don't know where he is currently. Um, I know he mentioned something about teaching in China. He's he's a worldly guy. He's He's been around the world. Nah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're not going to sing on this one. Let's go back to the projects. This is what is so great about these projects. He has two of them and look at their organization. This is awesome. You're doing everything right with this, in my opinion. Harmonica Assistant in Elm. This is the brief narrative, tech and features, the stuff you use to build it, and the challenges. Same with this one, Clothing Shop and React. You have the problem statement or, you know, a little explanation of what it was. So you can go to the actual project, you can go to the code, and he has demo videos! I assume that uh, you have read uh, all or most of this information, so I'm not going to explain uh, from the very beginning what this does. This is so freaking dope, dude. An eight, almost nine minute video doing a demo of your own project. Developers watching this, this is fire. This is fire. This is gold. Clothing shop and react. So with this one, I really like what you did here too. I really respect this. You linked to the course where you got this project. Is that right? This is the Andre Negoy course. Andre Negoy. This is the Andre Negoy course. <laughs> this is the Andre Negoy course. So you're, you're giving attribution there. That's great. Most people don't do that and um, try to pass it off as their own, which is fine if you're doing some tweaks, fine if you're making it your own, um, but I do like this transparency too. And you have the actual app here. You have the GitHub link. I don't need to go through those. I trust those are there. And then we go down here to CSS landing pages where you have the demo and the GitHub. Awesome organization. You put your two strongest projects here and your CSS landing pages, which, you know, they're pretty impressive in their own right, but employers want to see the big protein rich projects, which are these two things. Going over some of these tabs here. So the skills is an obvious one. Again, I love the drop downs. I like that you're not taking me to different places. I like that it's all in one page and I can read a little more about how you discovered this stuff, what you do with this stuff, what you think of this stuff. Um, and it's it's in my control. I don't have to read all this stuff, but it is there if I'm curious about it. CSS3, solid proficiency. I understand block model selectors and their weights. So this is cool. When I clicked learning, I didn't know actually, I thought maybe I was going to see your current status of what you were learning like right at this very moment. So maybe you could put, I don't know, this is just nitpicking. Um, all I'm saying is that when I saw learning and clicked on it, I didn't expect this. And when you're designing these things, you never want to make your reader guess what they're clicking on or what they're about to see. This is an interesting page too. The job title I am interested in is junior front end web developer. The tech I am most eager to work with is React. I want to learn these things deeply and become an expert. Mm, I don't know if I'd include that. You never want to call attention to yourself uh, when it comes to you being a newbie at something. Uh, maybe in a personal blog post off your portfolio, uh, but not when you're trying to sell yourself because this just tells me that, uh, just reminds me, I guess you could say, it reminds me that you're not an expert. Now, when I'm looking at these things, I'm not assuming people are experts and most people reading them are not assuming um, the candidate's an expert but you just don't want to remind them that you're not. You know what I'm saying? I'm certainly okay with doing some styling, but a position where styling is the primary focus would not be the right would not be right for me in the long term. I like the disclaimer. I'm interested in learning Node in the future and becoming a full stack developer. Maybe you could rephrase this a little bit. Future goals or uh, long term goal, just to show your employer that you are thinking about the future and what you can do right now today. 
up here. Let's go over to this HR FAQ thing because this really was the page where I said I have to do a portfolio review on this guy's portfolio because this is genius. The problem is, before I talk about the problem, let me let me just show you guys what this is. Questions HR people ask. Basic info. Look at this. He's got a table of all his vital stats. Name, gender, date of birth, current age. Dude, this is dope. Why have you decided to become a programmer? What have you what have you enjoyed about your previous job? What is your strongest quality? What kind of work do you want to do? What is your strongest quality? I'm a responsible employee. To me, it's very important to keep my promises and deliver quality work. Ooh, that's a strong statement. That's a strong statement because you want to know what? As junior developers, Junior devs, unfortunately, just don't have the trust factor right off the bat that mid-level and seniors do. You've got a lot to prove as a junior. And unfortunately, sometimes stereotypes get developed and established about juniors being irresponsible, um, not doing things in the code they should be doing, even though they are juniors, there are certain things um, a lot of people think that they should be responsible for, which, you know, I agree too. Every level has a degree of responsibility. Um, But unfortunately, like I said, some employers don't have the best positive vibes about juniors and reminding these people that you are responsible, um, even if it's just this statement. I mean, you haven't really proved it, you know, because you're not hired, but you've stated it. You're a responsible employee. It's very important to keep my promises and deliver quality work. I'm interested in learning more about you. This is what this does. It doesn't sell me on anything, but it reminds me that maybe I should give this guy a call. What is your biggest weakness? See, this is the kind of thing that I would come back to. If I called you for an interview and you said yes, I would come back here and pour over this thing and get some questions. I I definitely have some questions after reading this stuff. Now, the problem with this thing is that um, HR people might not even take the time to read this. In fact, most recruiters, <laughs> most of them aren't even going to read any of this stuff. They're going to see your profile on LinkedIn. They're going to ask you the same questions they've asked everyone else. You could even say, you know what, this is all on my website, but they don't care. They want you to say it to them. But I think this is definitely a keep. This is great for sparking conversations when it comes time for your interview. Um, because as an employer, there's a lot of stuff I can ask you to expand upon. Um, you know, what would make you quit a job? I love the transparency with this. Philosophy, hobbies, this. This is another one that confused me, how this site was made. Almost a case study. In fact, I would say this is a case study of this website, and I think that is also great. I'd like to see some more graphics, some more photos. Spruce spruce this up some and give me a focal point um, because you are describing your process, and that's great because the process is what's worth the money. It's not the fact that you can code because monkeys can also code. They're catching up with us. They're always you know two or three steps behind us in whatever we do, but I'm pretty sure If we sat a monkey down in a laboratory, they could learn how to code. And by that, I mean type. The process is what makes you worth money as an employee. And so this is really important too. I want to see it spruced up. I want to see some flavor. And while we're on the topic, I think one of the things that is keeping this portfolio a little bit behind is the lack of flavor. It needs a little salt. It needs a little pepper. It needs a little splash of color because right now it's very monochromatic, but not in an artsy monochromatic way. You know what I mean? It's pretty dry in that sense. And you have a lot to share. There is some really exciting stuff here. You were teaching uh, English in China. You're doing all sorts of fun, exciting things. And I think this portfolio needs to reflect that a little bit more, um, whether it's just a splash of color, whether it's some graphics, whether it's SVGs. I think it needs just a little spruce up. Let's check for mobile responsiveness. I trust you've taken care of this. Oh yeah, we're looking good. (laughs) 
And of course, the lonely contact form that no one has used it except myself to contact Oleg earlier this morning. <laughs> and his socials down here too. This is great too. I want to point this out. The contacts are all under one roof here. We've got the contact form. We've got the socials. A lot of times what I see developers do is like paste the socials everywhere or they'll put, um, you know, Facebook or like WhatsApp and stuff kind of like non-related socials. What, what are these socials? I don't know if I want to click on what is this one? I want to click on it, but I'm also scared. He's got a Skype here. What's this one? Okay, I would, if this is your resume in PDF form, as the link implies, I would I would state that somewhere. I would never want to click on a link when I don't know what it does, especially if it's going to download something. That is just a major turnoff uh, for everyone. So um, I would just, just put a little annotation there. Got your LinkedIn. Great freaking job. Oleg, great job, dude. I am really impressed with this portfolio. I think with the few tweaks, you're going to see even more results. And I know you mentioned you've been getting um, some callbacks and stuff. But like I said, with a few tweaks, I think you're really going to make this pop. It's already standing out in front of uh, the pack. It's already standing out in front of the pack. I've associated a face with the name. I want to call you back. I want to know more. And that's the most important thing you can do with your web developer portfolio, with your software developer portfolio. Compel that person to the point where they're contacting you. Judging from this portfolio, it's only a matter of time before a company scoops you up. Seriously, it's coming. Don't worry, don't worry, don't panic. Guys, thanks for watching. Oleg, thanks again. If you enjoyed this video, hit a button. Subscribe to this channel. All right, I'm blabbering. See you guys later.